Hello everyone, this is Akaya, and we're going to be taking another look at the Alpha Caster program today. I've actually added a lot of new features, changed some stuff around, so I uh, wanted to go ahead and create another quick video to help people out because this was not a minor change release, which is one of the reasons it took so long to kind of put everything together and get this latest version out there. So thank you to everyone who has been waiting patiently. Thank you to everyone who has provided feedback for this application. It's really helped with adding a lot of new functionality and really improving. Um, but anyways, right off the bat, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this settings panel over here. Um, this is the new revamped interface for the player settings. Uh, I added, a lot, like I said, I was adding a lot of functionality and it was just too much to fit onto one panel like I had it before. So I put it in uh, tabs basically where you've got the player details here. You can still just type in any names you want to, you know, put in your player colors and all that. I'm not going to go through all of that because that's in the first video. But, uh, you know, you can update this stuff and, uh, you know pretty basic you know you can see it updates in the interface there uh, the image overlays here works the exact same way as it did it's just broken out in its own tab now you can just select uh, any any image you want to off of your computer and then it'll basically add an overlay here which you can just drop wherever you need to in order to uh, you know if you want to put sponsor logos or anything like that on your casts oh my voice just cracked apparently I'm going through puberty again and then of course you'll have an image overlays panel here which allows you to modify the settings and you can manage the overlays delete the overlays if you need to um, if you need more information on how to use that reference the first video um, this new tab player intros which is actually some new functionality that I just recently added it's pretty basic right now pretty Spartan but I would like to expand that make it more robust in the future I'll get into detail into what that actually does here in a second um, and then the last one is general settings. This is going to have the uh, the resize settings, the overlay logo settings. If you want to change your overlay logo, uh, lock overlay, hide overlay, always on top, all that good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. So those settings are all there. They're just broken out into different tabs, um, and they all basically maintain the same functionality. Now, the first new item that I added that I want to go ahead and show you guys is this switch to low res version. And uh, I had some people that had given feedback that said basically, if you are streaming or capturing anything lower than 720p or 1080p for high definition, the uh, the overlay became kind of distorted. It was difficult to retext. Um, and of course the artwork in the background didn't look very good because if you have it in a low resolution you're not really capturing all the you know detail of the artwork so that doesn't look very good either so I made this low, re low res version which is basically a real basic metallic gray box uh, with the you know beveled edges and all that and it's basically just got the core information you've got set score here um, you've got your player races and it still uses the colors so you know if you want to do uh, red versus oops that's race not color red versus orange or whatever you know it'll still show the colors up and the colors the text will be a lot easier to read of course because it's on a straight black background where the uh, high res overlay version has like a gradiented blue which is uh you know pretty it's pretty detailed so if the resolution's cranked down and you've got one of the blue or purple colors selected for the player color sometimes it can be difficult to make out that colored text um so just wanted to point that out that is there and available now for those of you who stream or capture in lower quality um, also I have at, I actually added this uh, one or two versions ago but I haven't actually made a new video so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it real quick in case anybody has not noticed um, some people were saying that they don't like using the settings panel to make changes because they'll only use one monitor to do all of their streaming or capturing or whatever and um, they don't want to have to pull this panel up in the middle of a stream or capture in order to make modifications so I I've added the ability to make changes strictly in the interface so you can actually not use this uh, settings overlay you can just double click uh, on the player name and you can type in a um, a new name here just hit enter and it'll update that on the fly in the interface you can of course do the same thing with the scores here as well so um, you know if you have need to make any of those changes on the fly and you don't want to use the settings panel you have the ability to do that just by double clicking on those um, and actually you can uh, Another thing I wanted to show real quick too, uh, you can double click on the race icon and it'll cycle through 
all the different race options. So if uh, if you want to change the race icon there, you know that's not the most elegant way to do it. But I added in just in case anybody wanted that there. I do have a hotkey tied to that as well, which I'll be getting into hotkeys here in a little bit. Um, but going to the player intros, this is one of the things that I really wanted to show off because it is new functionality and I think it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, so anyways, basically what you've got is an intro player one, intro player two button. And this is a button that will allow you to introduce your players using uh, sound bites and a little bit of a animation. So uh, it, like I said, it's pretty basic right now. I would like to expand it in the future, but uh, this is, I think, a good starting point. And I have used this in one of my videos, so if you've seen it, you may already know what's going on here. But basically what you can do here is select a sound, which I have uh, in my application here. I've got a whoosh, whoosh.wave. So uh, just a basic WAV file is all you need, and this can be a sound effect that you download yourself or something you create. Um, you know, it, you can really do whatever kind of sound you want on there. You can put a fart sound on there for all I care, um, but it'll save that. That's one of the things that'll save in the config file. I added that so you don't have to select it every time, so when you bring this back up, it should automatically have these details saved. Um, the player intro size here and the player intro location and then there's an animation duration and a display duration and I'll explain what those mean here in a second but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this does let's go ahead and intro player one Akaya Ooh, yeah check that out but um yeah like I said real basic it just shows that uh, animation you know it rolls in the form has the player name on there so you know a little bit more sophisticated way if you want to do you know make a big deal of in introducing the players in the matchups um, kind of like they do on the GSL of course they have a lot more sophisticated animation but you know tasteless does this whole thing where he tries to introduce and stall for time until they actually play that uh, and then you know you can add in onto I've obviously just got the whoosh there but if you want to make a sound bite that has the whoosh and then you add on like a player name that says, you know, I am Jack's Guns or Akai or whatever, you can do that and, you know, have all the sound processing and whatever on it. But uh, it all has to be on one sound bite, just so you know. So that will all have to be together if you actually want to have the sound effect and the player name. Just want to throw that out there. Um, and then, of course, these settings here. Uh, the intro size, this actually controls how large that intro form is there. So, uh, But do keep in mind that it should stay... Um, in perspective the reason I put that intro size in there right now is so that if you're doing a low res stream you can actually make it smaller uh, but try to keep it as close to proportionate as you can because you know if you do like 600 by 100 and then you do the intro obviously look it's gonna be a lot longer and it looks kinda of distorted so um, try to keep it as close to the proper ratio as possible if you wanna have the ideal look on the uh, form I am going to be just to give you a little glimpse of the future functionality I am going to be adding a feature where you can replace the image that that's on that form with your own image so that way you can customize it even a little bit more if you want to but that's not currently in here and then this is the intro location so you can actually uh, tell it how far up and down and left and right you want to show on the form right now I've got it dialed in so that on my setup obviously it shows kind of in the middle on the far left of the screen so that's about where I like it obviously you guys can put it wherever it makes most sense for you if you're using this feature the animation duration is how long it takes for that form to slide in so if we want to make it let's say we've got a longer sound effect we want to make it um, instead of 400 we'll make it a thousand um, and then when you intro the player, you can see the animation rolls in a lot slower. So uh, that's one little custom duration that you can add in there. The other duration is the display duration. Now this is how long it's going to display after the animation completes. So let's say we do 6,000. This in I'm sorry, this is all in milliseconds. So you can be very precise with how long you want it to show for. Um, you know, you can make it show for a very short period of time, a long period of time, or like pretty much any interval in between because you're dealing with milliseconds. So it's pretty easy to adjust it on a very, very granular level. So that's the new player intro functionality. Obviously, if you hit the intro player one button, it's going to intro whoever your player one guy is here, which is right now Akaya. Um, and then if you click on the player intro or intro player two button, it'll intro whoever you have in the uh, the player two spot. So um, that's that basic functionality. Uh, hopefully you guys get a lot of use out of that. And since that's something that's really new to this application, I'm definitely interested to hearing your guys' feedback, how it can be better. Um, so definitely leave something in the comments. Uh, specifically, the, the more feedback we can traffic on the uh, the teamliquid.net thread, the better, because that'll keep everything kind of in the same place and make it a little bit easier for me to track. Um, so that's definitely the best place. You can find the link to that in the description for this YouTube video. Um, but that's that new functionality. And, uh, oh yeah, 
the other functionality that I wanted to show you guys is the uh, the hotkeys. I added a ton of hotkeys that will allow you to uh, control and manipulate the interface for various things. And uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and bring up. I've got a uh, text file that has them all listed, just so that I can keep it handy. But um, I will post a list of these hotkeys also on the teamliquid.net thread so that everybody can see that as a reference. But uh, basically, this is the list right here. So you can do a lot of different hotkeys, um, which control O, you can hide the overlay. So that's a hotkey to allow you to show or hide the overlay. Control P, this will allow you to show or hide the, um, the settings panel there. Um, and then you've got a bunch of different hotkeys for changing the player race. So you can change the player race there pretty quickly. That's easy to do. Um, player one races are hotkeyed through ASDF. Player two races are hotkeyed uh, LKJH. So um, you know I tried to keep them as close to possible, uh, close to each other as possible if they're related. Um, player score you can actually manipulate with the uh, with hotkeys as well if you want to um, by doing uh, Control Q increases player one control e or w sorry decreases player one um, so you can update those really quick without having to mess with the interface um, and then control e increases player two and r decreases player two so that's pretty straightforward functionality um, and then the intro player that i just showed you a second ago um, you can hit control one to introduce player one um, which will bring up the animation to introduce player one and then if you want to introduce player two you can just hit control two and it'll do that intro um, Hotkeys is something that a lot of people requested, so I wanted to make sure I got that added in, but that was a very, very difficult feature to implement because obviously it has to, uh, you want it to be able to catch those keystrokes even when you're not in the application. So I apologize for the delay on getting that feature in there for all of you who said that you wanted that because that of course is something that a lot of people it sounds like will get a use out of it. Um, I, just so you know too, I am very open to expanding the hotkeys um, in the application. So if you guys want hotkeys for specific functionality that I have not included, feel free to um, go ahead and drop a line in the teamliquid.net thread and let me know what kind of hotkeys you would like to see and I will do my best to uh, accommodate as many many different combinations and functionality options as possible. Um, one thing I am also probably going to add in the future is customizable hotkeys, um, which once again is going to be another large undertaking. So I can't promise any dates on when that will be available, but um, I would like you guys to know that that is something that I am working on and hopefully we'll have some time in the not too distant future. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything for the new application. Thanks for watching this. If you guys check this out, I know it's a really long video, but there was a ton of new stuff I had to cover on this. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any feedback, uh, either positive, or negative, you know, if you think something sucks, feel free to tell me. If you think something good or you want to see some additional things added, feel free to drop those notes in the teamliquid.net thread as well, which, like I said, I'm going to have a link to that in the video description here so that you guys can, you know, give your feedback if you're going to be using this application. And uh, a big shout out too to SC Reddit. Those guys actually used this application for their Reddit invitation a little while ago. So I'm very glad that we've already got such a notable. Uh, you know, part of the StarCraft 2 community using this application, and uh, I am more than happy to make special development changes specifically for larger organizations like that. So if you guys are a bigger organization like SC Reddit, or um, I can't even think of anything else right now, but you know, one of the bigger uh, sites that hosts tournaments somewhat regularly, feel free to contact me with a PM on TeamLiquid.net, or you can just leave your um, leave your information or whatever in the uh, in the Team Liquid thread and I will do my best to uh, accommodate you guys with as many changes as possible. So um, yeah, I think that's going to about wrap it up here. So thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm going to get out of here and go play some StarCraft 2 now. Later.